Okay, now we're gonna go for the PCB, process controlled block. Again, it's divided into header file and uh, code file. So PCB.h, header, PCB.c, code. And I'm gonna be starting with PCB.h, uh, that's the proper sequence. Um, I think we will see a lot of things here that we have seen before in the event, so I'm not gonna be spending so much time in it. Here, again, if not def, PCB, I like to define it this way, underscore the uh, name of the file, the name of the um, file in capital letters. So if not def, underscore PCB, define, underscore PCB, and in the end here you have the end if, okay? Those are just, uh, you know, uh, lines to make separation. That's all as comment, as you can see. All right, so don't worry about it. <clears throat> the exact same thing I say here, type def struct capital PCB. And here I define it as small PCB. Why? So that I can just use PCB like this. If you don't try this again, what would happen? And instead of writing the PCB, you need to write struct PCB capital, which is the name here, okay? Um, I don't like to write the word struct PCB, uh, you know. It's easier just to write the PCB, that's why I define it here. Inside the PCB, we have the PID as integer. The process state, what is process state? The state is of type process state. What is it? Is it new? Um, is it running? Is it ready? Is it uh, waiting? Is it uh, um, uh, terminated? Uh, so that's the state. How about the process type? The process type is either I.O. or CPU. Okay. Before I continue, let's see how I define those two. Again, we define them to be enum. So see, type def, enum. I call it process state capital here. And then you write here, new equals one, and then ready, so ready is two, because I didn't assign any value. Waiting, running, uh, and then terminate, and then I give it here the process state as small. So that's why I can define this as just process underscore state. If you don't define it this way, so every, each and every time you have to define it, you have to include the word enum with it, okay? Um, same applies to process type. I just defined it to be CPU bound and IO bound. Of course, if this is one, this, this is by default two. Okay, <clears throat> now we have the arrival time of the process. Um, here, the PCB, supports that uh, a process can go for the waiting state, okay? And that's why I'm saying here the I.O. from and I.O. to, because when the I.O. is happening, the process will be in the waiting state, right? Uh, the burst, the start time, so the, the start of the execution, the finish time, the waiting time, the response time, the remaining time, the turnaround time, the priority, and the deadline. This includes everything you need if you want to get a statistics and if you want to apply any algorithm. So as an example, if you want to get the um, uh, something like the uh, waiting time here, how would you calculate the waiting time, right? It's going to be the uh, finish minus the arrival, right? minus the burst, you get the waiting. How about the response time? Huh? Start time minus the arrival time. Okay, the turnaround time, it would be the finish time minus the arrival time and so on, okay? All right, uh, so that's the definition of the PCB. And then we're saying here that the, that's the signatures of the function that you're gonna be writing or we're gonna be writing, it's already written for you. Um, so you have here init PCB, init 
initialize PCB, it takes three integers. You will see what they are when we go for the code. What does it return? It returns pointer to PCB. Print, it's a function that returns void. It doesn't return anything. It, you just need to print. Okay, so print PCB and here uh, it takes a pointer to PCB. Is PCB, it compares two PCBs together, okay? So it says, is this the same as that? Okay, so it compares two together. Again, it returns integer. If they are the same, uh, it returns uh, zero. If uh, the first one is greater than the second one, the, it returns one and or positive, positive. And if the first one is less than the second one, it returns negative. What does it mean for a process to be less or greater? You will see it when we go for the code, the PCB.C, okay? Here, uh, you can compare two based on so many things. So here I can compare two processes based on the arrival time. It takes void and void, the exact same idea. So it takes a process here and a process there, PCB and PCB. If the f uh, arrival uh, time of the first and the uh, arrival time of the second are equal, it will return zero. If the arrival time of the first is greater than the arrival time of the second, so it means it arrived after, it's going to be a positive. If the arrival time of the first uh, is uh, less than the arrival time of the second, it's going to be negative. Same applies when you compare burst, when you compare remaining time, when you compare priority, when you compare deadline, and so on. Why did I do that? Why did I uh, wrote all those comparisons? Uh, simply because when you compare arrival time here, you can use this to do first come, first serve. When you compare burst, you can do use it to uh, perform shorter drop first. When you compare remaining time, you can use it to implement shortest remaining time first. When you do priority, you perform priority. When you compare deadline, you do EDF, okay? All right, uh, and then we have two functions, the interprets, one to interpret the state and one to interpret the type, the exact same way we interpreted the event type, remember? So here as an example for the state, uh, new is one, ready is two, waiting is three, and so on. So if you print the value, it's going to be one, two, and three. You as a programmer, you could understand it, but the user would never do. The user wants to know that the state here is new, the word new, the word ready, the word waiting, and so on. So in order to do that, you have to change the number into a word, just like the same way we did it with the event. Same applies with the type. Here we interpret the process type. So uh, if it's a one, we're gonna print CPU bound. If it's two, we're gonna print IO bound. Okay, so those are the two interprets. And then we have here copy CPU. It takes CPU one, uh, sorry, a PCB. So it takes uh, a PCB one and PCB two, and it copies the contents of the PCB2 into the content of the PCB1. As you can see here, those are the definition, the signatures of the functions, and the code of the functions we will see now in the PCB.C. Let's go to PCB.C <coughs> here. So here again, we include the studio, we include the stdlib, and we include pcb.h, okay? And again, it's inside the two quotes, double quotes, because the file pcb.h exists in the same directory as pcb.c. So you don't need, if you put it inside the directory of the libraries or in of the C, the core libraries of the C, then you can write it with those two uh, um, um, like brackets. However, this is not something that you should be uh, doing okay, so let's go for the init PCB. <coughs> hmm. 
function init PCB, what it does is initializes a PCB. So it creates and initializes a PCB, a process control block. And then when it does, it returns it to the color. The input parameters, as you can see, is the ID of the PCB, the maximum length of the PCB, the inter-arrival time of the PCB, which is the time between two uh, arrivals. I do it this way. So here uh, we define the uh, uh, process. We create the process using malloc. I'm not going to repeat the malloc again. I already explained it in event.c. If you don't know it, please go back to the explanation of event.c in the previous video. Here it takes size of the uh, struct PCB and it returns it as the pointer to PCB and assigns it to the process. And then you put the ID inside the PID. You put the new state. It's just created, correct? So the state is going to be new. See, this is the beauty of using enum. If I didn't use that, I say state equals one. Even, even though I'm the programmer, if I come back after like six months or something and revisit this code and I say the state equal one, I would have so many question marks. What is one? But now when I say new, I know what it is, right? Of course, unless I don't know any operating systems, but if you know operating systems, when you say state equal new, you know what that is. The burst, I'm generating it randomly. So to generate random uh, numbers in um, uh, C, you use rand and then brackets. This will uh, generate a random uh, integer. Okay, I just want that integer like uh, to be uh, from 1 to 100. That's it. Okay, that's my problem definition. So how would I do that? I take mod 100. Taking mod 100 will give you any value from 0 to 99. And that's why I add 1. So it's going to be from 1 to 100. Okay. Same applies with the T. Here T is time. Okay, sorry, it is uh, type. So I generate a random <coughs> number uh, uh, from 0 to 9, as you can see. That's why I take mod 10 and assign it to T. I assume that the process type is CPU bound, okay? This one is not uh, done for you guys. It's for the next semester. I'll explain it anyways. If the T is greater than or equal 7, I change the uh, type to be I.O. bound. So this means that you have, uh, if the value is 7, 8, 9, uh, this is going to be an I.O. If the value from 0 to 6, this is going to be CPU. So you have 70% chance to have a CPU bound. I commented this code, so for you guys, it's 100% CPU bound, okay? Um, and then here, the remaining time, initially, as you know from operating systems, the remaining time is in, initially, it's the burst of the process. I don't know about the arrival time yet. I don't know the start time. I don't know the finish time. I, I, you know, so all I put as, as you can see, zero. The priority here, I put it random to be mod 5, so it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. As you know, 0 is the highest, 4 in this case would be the lowest. The deadline here, I said, you know, I put an equation for it, so the arrival time plus the burst plus the slack time, right? So what is the slack time? I made it random mod the... Uh, enter arrival time that is being passed and then I return the process. So this code basically what does it do? It generates a process, it creates a process, gives it the ID, it puts the state to be new, uh, it generates random burst uh, from, Z, from 1 to 100 um, and then uh, in this case it puts the type to be the CPUs and it initializes the the remaining time to be burst and everything else is uh, zeros. 
the priority is any number, random number from zero to four, and it puts the deadline to be the arrival time plus the burst plus random value, okay? To print the PCB, you send the uh, PC process to be printed. I print here the PID, the process ID. I print the state. Um, uh, that's why I call the interpreted. If you don't know how this works, please go back to the event.c. Um, the, also, the interpret uh, type. I print the burst the priority, the deadline, the arrival time, the start time, the finish time, the turnaround time, the waiting, the response, and the remaining time. So this, all this does is print the details of the process. Here is how we interpret the state again. If it's new, then, uh, you know, I'm going to return the word new. If it's ready, I'm going to return the word ready. If it's running, I'm going to return the word running. If it's waiting, I'm going to return the word waiting. If it's terminate, I'm going to be returning the word terminate. If it's none of them, thing of them, which is impossible, then I'm going to be returning undefined. That's not going to happen, okay? Uh, here, interpret type. I did it with an if statement because it's only either I.O. bound or um, uh, CPU bound, so it does not really need switch case. So here I said, you know, if the type is I.O. bound return, the word I.O. bound. If it's not, uh, it will skip this, so the default is return CPU bound. The comparison here, again, exactly the same way we did the comparing the uh, events, but here we're comparing arrival time. I'm going to take the item one, item two, put item one in PCB one, put item two in PCB two. If you don't know why we do that, go back to the event.c, and then I'm going to be returning the PCB one arrival time minus PCB two arrival time. So what does it mean? If PCB one arrived before PCB two, the return is going to be negative. If PCB1 and PCB2 arrived in the exact same time, the return is going to be a zero. If PCB1 uh, arrived after PCB2, then the return is going to be positive. Exactly the same thing applies for bursts. So I'm going to take the item 1, put it in PCB1, item 2, put it in PCB2, and then I return burst minus burst. Okay. If PCB1 is greater, like larger than PCB2, it's going to be a positive. If they have the same burst, it's going to be zero. If BCB1 is smaller, then it's going to be negative. Same with the remaining time, exactly the same. I'm not going to waste time in here. Priority and the deadline, exactly the same, okay? Is PCB says whether uh, the two items are the same. So basically, I'm returning, comparing the two IDs, PIDs, together. Uh, if this equals this, then it's the same process. If they are not equal, then it's not, okay? The last one here is copy PCB. I take the target and the source. I'm going to uh, copy everything from the source to the target. Again, if the target is null, let's create the process first. PCB store M malloc and then size off. PCB. I explained that in uh, event.c. I'll take the PID, put it in the ID, the state in the state, the type in the type, arrival time in the arrival time, and so on and so forth. Again, we don't need to return here because the target is call by reference. If you don't know uh, what uh, call by reference is, please, uh, you have to revise that or come to me in the office hours to uh, explain it for you.